right, everybody, welcome back. This is our final three days. We are so excited. Uh, we today have a wonderful model named Jemiah. Jemiah. So say hey to Jemiah, everyone. And uh, the lovely Erica Arcudi is joining me today. And then behind the scenes, you will hear the lovely voice of Tina Figueroa. So thank you all so much for helping with those things. And thank you all for joining. I'm so excited about today. Today we're painting layers. We're going to take everything that we've kind of learned and tried over the month, and we're going to combine them all into a three-day layered painting. So this is what I am typically used to, but the idea is for people who this is a fearful thing for them, they usually paint all the cream off. Here's your opportunity to have the liberty to fail and the liberty to learn something new and to discover something new. So, uh, what we're planning on doing today is I'll, we'll take maybe two different approaches. Eric will take the approach that she has been trained, and I'll do the same. I'll probably work mainly on the drawing today with a little bit of color, and then each day we'll get on to those. So, um, my fear facing thing is I'm probably going to add more color than I usually do for the beginning layer, uh, where I usually do just the drawing. And uh, so we're, we'll see how that goes. Looking forward to it. All right, we shall get started. So, Jemai is from the journal area. Went to school at University UNC Greensboro. And uh, it's not the same place that my wife went for getting her postdoctoral. So, it's a great, great school. It's really wonderful. I have to zoom out more here because I don't. Oh. Excuse us while we fix a few things to get it ready for everyone. All right, so first little bit, I'm going to just work on exactly. Same idea, lining up the cut. And I know, I'm so excited. Three days. You've done a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. I'm very excited to have three sessions on this. Mm -hmm. I will say that. It's still a short amount of time. Yeah, short, short time compared to what you're used to. Yeah. But I'm very excited to take some time today to work on the drawing, work on the design, and not rush through that stage. Yeah. Um, I think we were talking a lot about ways of confronting fears this month. Mm -hmm. I actually think. So maybe this stage isn't so much of confronting my fears, but setting myself up well to then experiment on subsequent layers. Yeah. So I'm building, my goal today is to build a strong foundation so that way I can go in with confidence as I um, experiment with different colors and techniques and kind of push um, my abilities. What a lovely model to be with. Generally about how pretty your skin is. So what we're going to plan on doing today is at the end of the session we will have this live feed that if you want to paint along with this right now you can. Um, but near the end of the session we will take shots of her uh, and have them for you to paint along with this in the next couple of sessions too. So uh, look forward to that at the end of the day. Um, the reason we get to do it, do it earlier is because we uh, are our live cameras. So everything has to be multi-purposed here. That's how we afford we can afford to get what we get, you know. Just gonna see a couple of the things that I want to check out is how the scale which I want her face to be in the painting. 
Let's say that the head was here, and that way I can decide where everything else is going to go and how far down the painting will go. It's a beautiful pose. Isn't, Isn't it? That? Yeah. We have some people joining us in the chat. Let's awesome. see, we have someone saying hi from cloudy Omaha. And we have Alyssa joining us from Australia. Hi, Alyssa. And Paul is wondering if we all liked his Calvin Hobbes in Share Your Meme on the Discord group, which I haven't seen yet. Wait, did he send it last night? I'm Sounded... not sure. I didn't see that one. I haven't I seen it I need to go check either. it out. Uh, I would check it out now, but the, <laughs> my phone is also being used as a camera. <laughs> We're using everything we have here. Yep. I got on briefly last night, but for some reason I was just exhausted. I didn't sleep well the night before, so like I, I kind of like crashed afterwards. And um, so I wasn't on long. So you probably put it posted and I just didn't see it. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. We have Judith says hi from Virginia. Esteban, our friend Esteban says, hello everyone, north of Sweden here. Last days, I can't believe it. It's Isn't that going, something? It went by really fast. It did go by really fast. We have our friend Emily Fossum joining. She says, hello friends, hi, happy to get to see you guys painting again. Yeah. Jane from Australia, another Australian, welcome. And we have Natalie Williamson. She says, oh my goodness, I just tuned in and assumed this was a reference image. Jumped out of my skin when the model smiled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, it is the season to be scary. Yeah, it's only fair. <laughs> and she also says, hi from the UK. Hi, Chelsea. Thanks for joining us again. We've had such loyal followers this, on this, this journey. Yeah, we really have. It's been a lot of fun to do this with everyone. Rosie just joined us again in the studio, by the way, Louie. Oh, I know it. And <laughs> she's our little emotional support um, mascot here in East Oaks. So she keeps us going. It has such a nice contrapposto to it. Mm -hmm. Is it nice knowing that you're going to have multiple days to work on this instead of having a three-hour time span? It is. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like I, you know, like Eric had said, I feel like I can take a little time and and you know, uh, actually kind of set set up a few things in the pose, you know, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm really excited to draw. <laughs> I just know. Focus Gosh. on drawing. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. What size panels are you guys working on now? Uh, we're both working on 11 by 14. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yep. Oh, Esteban is saying, I'm going to miss this so much. Well, Esteban, I promise we'll continue to do more in the future. We'll have to take a little break and recover. I'll have to like lick my wounds for a little bit, but after that, we'll make sure to 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 do it again. I will say this has forced me to to some degree that I have painted probably more this month than I typically paint uh, every day because I have so much admin typically that I have to do, and I. I travel and I do meetings and teach and, you know, that it was kind of nice to have something that forced you to have to be in the studio every day painting. Mm -hmm. So that part has been pretty awesome. Rosie has a tendency to want to like um, sit right <laughs> at our feet. <laughs> And, and, and I don't even mind. <laughs> so, 
Hey, baby. How about she's we go? <laughs> Y'all, I wish I could put a live feed on her. She's just so precious. All right, baby. I need to get you. Come out here. Come here. No, no, no. It's okay. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Should I grab her bed? That way maybe she just lays yeah. in one spot. Where is yeah. it out there? Yep. Every, everybody needs a studio, uh, a studio mate, uh, a furry friend. I'm like, I'll work around her. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so another thing I like to do is give give some leeway for the, like the first session or two for just for the the pose to settle and mm -hmm. you know all of us have muscle memory and we tend to to um, find a place that feels perfectly comfortable and the pose won't be too far off it's just uh, allow for that room to happen for the first couple of the poses just to see how it settles. And it usually settles into something natural and comfortable. Exactly. Where, um, versus perhaps when you're first setting up, um, and this is not our, in our current model situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You're doing great. You're doing excellent. Um, sometimes a model might feel like I have to pose and therefore mm -hmm. it feels um, uptight or something just not quite natural. And so you know, giving some time for the model to just, you know, be herself, yeah, be human. Exactly. We have a comment from C. McQueen. They're saying, good morning from New Zealand. Looking forward to going back and revisiting the past episodes during my 10-day art event at our local hall. Thanks so much for your motivational videos. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can hear. I don't think they could hear. But Rosie has is, is decided she's grooming herself now. We'll give you updates on her from time to time. <laughs> And because we are w waiting for um, the post to settle and we're getting started mm -hmm. and we have some time, so there's not so much of a rush, um, I'm making sure that I'm starting very flexible, very uh, dry. That way I can easily paint over it and there's no, um, it doesn't feel like disturbing visually. I think. Yeah. Um, letting the soft, flexible marks uh, reflect my mentality at the stage. And as I'm just slowly starting to map where I want my composition to be. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's not often we get to put a hand in there. I am so excited. Sessions. Yeah. We have Joyce joining us from Washington. And we also have Stephanie saying, Sock, the tuxedo cat, is always on hand. And I also have a tuxedo cat. Her Aww. name is Zelda, and I love her very much. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul has an in interesting comment. He's saying, Washington and New Zealand, both morning, but on different days. Oh, oh wow. Thursday Isn't that morning. wild? Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. And we have about seven minutes left in our first session, just so everyone knows. I'm also making sure I take time to step really far back from my composition, making sure I like the big impression and where things are headed. Mm -hmm. 
Louis, can you talk more about what lines you you have on there? Yeah, what you're making? I'm I'm just making some really basic uh, structural lines um, to describe different parts of it. So because her head chin is up a bit, uh, the foreshortened perspective of her face, usually your tear ducts fall right in the halfway mark. And in this instance, because her head's tilted up further, the foreshortening of her forehead makes that not the case in, in this instance. So I'm just measuring it based off of other marks to see kind of where it's going to fit because it's going to help me then in turn find uh, the relationships of the height to the width of her face. So something that, for example, I'm measuring up to her tear duct as the height and turning that into the width and noticing that the width to the height of her tear duct is slightly more narrow than the width of her face. So, um, so I'm just going through here and checking to see how close that is. And then that I can make a better judgment call. Um, on where I should be placing the face. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be perfect right now. It's just a real, you know, a lot of people hold themselves slave to the measurements and that's not good. These are, consider them like guideline landmarks that just help me get started. Um, it's more about like later on, it's more about the training that you have to help you see the shapes that help you, on, in, in most cases, get even a more accurate relationship and it becomes more intuitive and more energetic because of it. When so. it comes to measurements, I always think it's important to know what you're measuring and why. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, you know, if, you're, if you have a, you know, thinking academic figure of painting, mm -hmm. you have a, a figure standing in contraposto, so you have a, a straight standing leg and a free leg. You might not really want to measure uh, where that knee is because right. we're on the free leg. Right. Yes. You know. Absolutely. Because that's going to move. It's going to swing. It's going to move. You know, as the model sinks into the pose, and then that's too. Uh, that after a while it gets painful. So then they stiffen. They mm -hmm. stiffen up, and so it's just going to change. Right. But you know, if Instead, it's wiser to measure perhaps the iliac crest on the standing leg because mm -hmm. even if the model sinks in or rotates, that's not going to move. Uh, that height is not going to move. And right. so um, I think that there's a lot of similarities in, with, with portraits as well, whether you're working site size or uh, constructive figure drawing, et cetera, taking measurements and um, comparing different things. You have to be aware of what might shift and what might be consistent um, that way you're not chasing something that's going to be uh, moving around. Mm -hmm. So good. Like in this instance, to add to what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, the thing that I'm not going to put in quite yet, like I want to get the structure because of the face sort of understood because aside from the lips, everything else is based off of bone structure that's mm -hmm. not going to move. So if I can get the structure right, then everything's going to, if, if she moves, it moves with it. So like I, I can still get myself into understanding exactly where the structure is spatially. Mm -hmm. But like every time she gets up for a new pose, her hand might change. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not gonna paint the hand today, it's actually better for me to get the structure solid of the face because I can then better nail the mm -hmm. drawing of the hand exactly. in one session. Because the hand is movable. Exactly. And you you don't want to hold or measure something against the hand when that's the thing that's going to move the most. Exactly. Well, on the topic of your training, Erica, mm -hmm. Julie has a question. She says, Erica, you were trained in sight size in Florence. Do you mm -hmm. still use it? I do still use it. I'm not using it right now. Um, I find that I use it when I can, and then I have to be flexible sometimes with other, with my di you know different setups, and sometimes um, having the subject and the panel right next to each other doesn't always work. And so, but it could be from lighting or 
needing enough light on my panel or for whatever reason. So um, to be a little flexible uh, is, is something I found to be necessary. But I always, I don't think in a way like of sight size and um, using comparative measurement or any other kind of reference. Like a lot of these things are not so far apart in terms yep. of um, difference of method. I find that Sight size is really useful if, if I'm doing something that has a lot of ellipses. <laughs> and so, mm. for example, I had a commission where I was painting florals in a, um, in a vase uh, on a tabletop. And I really wanted to make sure that, that it sat nicely on that tabletop. So I set it up sight size just to help myself, give myself that extra tool for reference. Um, and so it was helpful from, from that uh, standpoint. But for something like this, I'm not using sight size, but I think of a lot of the principles of, of sight size while I'm painting. A lot of the optical um, things, different observational tools. Um, there's a lot of crossover. So I like to say this because I was trained sight size, but I don't think of it as being boxed in to, to one singular method. Mm -hmm. It's good to have the tool set to be able to do it but not use mm -hmm. it as a crutch and have it be the only way you know how to for sure to make and art i think like anything like any method you have to learn why you're doing it mm -hmm. and and what the purpose behind a lot of the tools that you're using are yeah and on that note we did just finish our first session right. so we're going to be doing a five minute break and we will be back in five minutes Great. all right seeing y'all in a bit everyone
Did her, was her chin a little bit more lifted on yours? Yeah, maybe. And was rotate her bot her face rotated this way a little bit? Gently, yeah. That way, yep. There mm -hmm. you go. And then maybe do you have that a little bit straighter, or how's your inclination? I think for you, no, a little bit straighter. Yeah. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. How's that? Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good. How's cool. that feel for you? Good. Okay. I'm going to make sure. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. worries. Brings me back to my student days when you're yeah. on yeah. site size and you have the easels on both sides, both sides, double checking the pose. Mm -hmm. both sides. Like if you if you work on that, I'll like always double check from the beginning. <laughs> Wait, yep. you're not like halfway through the pose and like, um, this isn't the right, in the right position. <laughs> That's the worst because then people have like just gotten uh, used to it and then yeah, reset yeah. their painting and then like, um, so then like once you've told the model to get back into the position, mm -hmm. then there you've got people being like, oh, I just changed it. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> oh, <laughs> artist problems. We have a question from Joy. She's wondering if there's a reference photo for today's model. It said she's great. And we will have reference images up for you guys after today's session. So we'll be taking the photos and uploading for you then. For you then. Because she is just a gorgeous model. We love having her here. And we also have an interesting question from Benjamin. He is asked, or he is saying, this is the point in the painting where I lose all faith in my ability to paint. Can no. you discuss your <laughs> I'm terrible moments and how you work through them? Which is a good question because those are rough times. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> so he's asking. How do you, he says, can you discuss your quote, I'm terrible moments and how do you work through them? Hmm. E yeah, everybody has a, a moment where you have to just take a big deep breath and go, oh man, come on. You know, where you're frustrated and you, it doesn't feel like you have a way out or something. Um, and what I find is, is I have to persevere. So like, for example, in one of these challenges, I was painting that purple cabbage and I just mm -hmm. couldn't get there. It's just such rich color. It's so hard to like, understand how to like get the form on something that is that powerful of a color and actually make it look like a cabbage and it's just not like a big old purple blob. And it took me for a, a while to just go, oh man, what what am I doing? What, 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 what am I doing wrong? And I just, I go back, for me, I go back to the basics. I, I'm like, okay, what's the lightest moment? And what, what's the physics happening here? That's usually where I start. I start back at the very foundational basics. Um, how is the light wrapping around the form, either in a concave or a convex way? And uh, then after that, I make that assessment and then I go, okay, now compared to other parts of the painting, what's the most chromatic thing happening? And so then I, we talk about the most chromatic thing in my, and we talk about it as, like me and myself and I <laughs> talk about it. You know, we have a big discussion and an argument. Um, nobody wants to be in here when I'm having an argument with myself. And then um, I go, okay, what's the darkest dark? And then I go, well, logically, in order for this to be the most chromatic thing, this has to have less chroma. And then uh, literally, I just start breaking things down, and then if I do that and I work like section by section with that idea, all of a sudden the whole thing starts coming into place. And sometimes it feels like magic. You're just like, oh, all right, well now I can actually see the direction at which, where I need to go. But it's hard. It's hard to like get to that point. I understand uh, when people are having a tough time with that. Yeah. Jasmine has a comment and she says she takes a breath and goes to the kitchen for a coffee. And <laughs> definitely, that's a good idea. That is a great idea. I, I've, I've, I may or may not have done that before <laughs> <laughs> to the point of too much coffee. 
It's like another coffee. I just had one 10 minutes ago. Okay, well, decaf. time for another one. De yeah. Decaf. <laughs> I mean, jokes aside, like having time away from the painting for a second mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. reset your mind, uh, not uh, obsess over, <laughs> over it, uh, is, is healthy. It's a good thing, good thing to do when you have those moments because when you are stressed, it's not conducive to quality mm -hmm. decision making. So taking, taking a time to, um, to relax for a second and have some grace with yourself. Since, mm. um, what we're doing is not easy. So um, I, find, I find that there, when, when I'm in that position, I try to always go back to the drawing. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, I ask myself, kind of, like, kind of like what Lewis is saying, I'll ask myself, you know, some of the basic questions, you know, essential relationships. So I'm thinking of, um, how are my values structured? How are, like, how are my proportions working? Um, how, and I'll look, if I'm painting a portrait or a figure, I'm thinking anatomy. You know, is, there, is there something that's uh, not connecting right? And I try to work that out. Um, almost going back to the beginning stages um, of what I would think about in a block-in stage. Mm. Um, making sure that those big relationships are working and they'll slowly work into smaller and smaller, uh, more specific pieces of information. Mm. So I've told this story, I've probably told it on here before and I tell all my students the story, but basically I was in third year, we were doing self-portraits and I was like, okay, like I've done a couple portraits now, like I think I can do this and I had my color study and I'm like, I'm all set, I'm going to do this portrait, it's going to be so great. And I started out okay, and then, you know, in the middle stages of the painting, it just, like, I could just watch the drawing of my face just melt in front of my eyes. I'm just Ugh. horrified of the product I was making. And, of course, it's a self-portrait. So you're looking in the mirror <laughs> and then, like, looking at your painting and watching everybody suffer. And so, oh. um, long story short, uh, painting was going horribly, um, and... I, I was just like, I don't even know what to do at the stage. And so I got one of my friends and asked, what would you do at this stage? And he basically was like, okay, no worries. We're just going to soften everything. And just mm. like we scraped off some of like the excess paint and then just softened everything and just, you know, got it to a stage where I could paint on top of it the next day. And the next day I go into <laughs> go in, in the morning like, Ramiro, I ruined my painting this weekend. This is what I did. How can I, what can I, how can I fix this? And he's like, yeah, no worries. Just, you know, take your transfer drawing, you know, the preparatory work that you put, you know, put it right next to your painting, mix up a warm shadow color and just, just redraw, just redraw the whole thing. And because I'd softened everything underneath, um, it was easy to paint on top of. And I just, I redrew the whole thing and it was so nice to just get back to the basics and just mm -hmm. align, align my direction. And then um, it took some time, but I, of like slowly rebuilding the painting, but um, it ended up working out. So it, it was a painful experience, of course, but, mm -hmm. um, and of course you're like, I only have like a, a month left of school. I want to like do well. And so there's a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself, but, um, I'm, I'm happy I went through that because then I know that if whatever goes wrong in a painting, I know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I know how to come back from a destroyed painting yep. yeah. and without having to just scrap it and start over. So uh, it was a useful experience mm -hmm. for sure. Important skill set to have for sure. And it's interesting how important it is about your mindset because mm -hmm. it can totally shift the way you proceed with your painting. Like if you have, if you start to have some, you know, if you get frustrated with it, start to have some negative thoughts mm -hmm. about your painting and it can so easily go downhill from there and you can just completely ruin your painting because of your mindset. So having a better outlook on your painting can be crucial to just being able to continue. And I feel like it's important to note that powering through doesn't have to look 
like aggressive and intense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. powering through where like you're not going to just give up on the painting, but that can mean um, taking a moment and working slowly and mm -hmm. slowly rebuilding like that for me is more uh, useful and rather than just like, oh, I'll get through it. I'll just like force it. And in that heart, that's one of the reasons why, or I'm, I'm, I'm going a different route than I usually do, where I, I draw a whole lot usually at the beginning stage, but I'm, I'm working in a route almost as if like I'm painting a bit of this layer feeling like it's going to be an a la prima painting for mm -hmm. the chance of trying a different route that I um, don't typically take to stay in the, in the theme and the heart of matter but everything that she Erica said is just you know spot on a little fun artist trick if no one knows this is that if you have a, a bit of heavier paint and the mark making is creating glare take a, a fan brush or anything that has like a loss a soft brush and paint in the direction of your light source and just all you just dry brush all you do is just lightly tap it and it will change the direction of the brush strokes and make no glare on your painting and that helps. We have a question from Christopher. He's saying, hi Lewis, greetings from Ireland. A question for Lewis. What thought process are needed when it comes to chroma, assuming the value is correct? So I'm thinking he's asking, what are your thoughts when trying to match the chroma and what are you thinking about um, when the value is already correct? Mm. So, great question. Um, number one, with value, you're thinking about the light most facing plane in order to know where the brightest section is and then what, what, what specular reflection is happening in, in a painting, which is your highlight. And, you know, for skin, you have satin skin, so, you're, so the highlight is... Can be, can be more soft, unless it's like on your nose. Um, so, but with the light most facing plane also comes the truest uh, nature of the local color of the, of the skin in this instance. Uh, it could be of the, whatever object you're working on. So um, what all color is, is relationships to other color. So, we can't accurately, perfectly represent what we see because we are at a disadvantage in our uh, color. So what we do is say, okay, well, the most chromatic moment is going to be on this plane because it is the light most facing one. And then from there, um, I make a judgment call and, and go from that point. Now, something to also consider is that I am creating an anchor point, which is the hair. And I want to I want to come from the hair to the light source, and that is a form of of window shading. But um, in this instance, I am going to not. It's not going to be finished as I go. It's but it is going to help me grasp the structure in in the form of her from from that. And so as I go from the side of the hair up to the top of the forehead, and I'm using the forehead because it's the most spherical thing on the face, um, I get more chromatic and lighter at the same time, you know, because, well, you said it's, it's you know, as if you painted a grisaille because you were saying if the value is already correct. So uh, just find the highest value point and then determine whether that is a highlight or if it is the most light facing plane and no highlight and then it's going to be the most chromatic spot if there is no highlight and if there is it's going to drop uh, towards a more neutral highlight and then, then, then right next to that highlight is going to be the most chromatic spot. Now, I always say that in the sense that, that it depends. There's always a scenario that that, that that is not the case. And in this instance, like one of those cases might be that you might have a more chromatic spot when 
you know, lights passing through the skin and hitting capillaries and coming out the other end, and they call that uh, um, light transmission or transference. And when that happens, there's a thing called subsurface scattering, which is it, it sort of the light mixes with the blood capillaries and makes a real chromatic note as it comes out the other side. So you might have like this really crimson note, like if you have very fair skin, like on the corner, like on the fold of the ear or inside the nostril. So, um, so yeah, that hopefully that helped answer that question. Um, well said, Louis. You know, it's kind of one of those things where sometimes teaching those kinds of things is, will take a whole semester of information, but that's, that's the basics. And you can do a lot with just the basics. That's what was so fun about doing the Grisai uh, day was that, you know, I was working with three colors, but I didn't feel like anything was missing. Like there was so much that yeah. I felt like I could push and do more of. Um, and I didn't, I only had three colors. That's so. good. So good. You, you'd be amazed at how much color you can get with limited color in your palette because it's all about perception. And Christopher says, superb answer, thank you. Mm, you're welcome. And we have about three minutes left in this session. Well, time's already flying. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Tell us what you're working on, everybody. See, we'd love to hear what it is and how you're doing it. Yeah, these are the last three days, so hopefully people are painting along still. We do have our Discord channel where you can upload your photos of whatever you're working on. Right now I'm slowly starting to make more decisions and clearer decisions of placement. And so for example, starting to gently put in uh, clearer anatomical points, um, mm. yet at the same time with enough flexibility that as I start to add things and other information becomes clear, I can still move stuff around and it's not um, too big of a commitment. Hmm. But it's important to make decisions um, even if they're going to be off. Uh, we've talked a lot about this, I think, during this time, but you have to have something down in order to know what to yep. do with it. And so mm -hmm. um, the areas that, for a pose like this, a good place to start once you kind of have a general map. I like to make sure that going from the far eyebrow, like the brow bone, sorry, to the ridge of the nose, and then down the nose, and then the placement of the nose down here, I like to make sure that there's this Z that happens. And mm. I like to um, have that placement understood because of a few reasons. Um, I have the bone structure of the forehead and the cheekbones and like a lot of things that like central relationships really key. But also when the model gets back up, 
then I have a good understanding if perhaps she's mm -hmm. turning a little bit to the left or to the right, then I can say, um, if I understand what this distance is, then I mm. have a, a nice way of knowing when she gets back up that the pose is consistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's more obvious from uh, from a three-quarter point of view than, for example, Lewis's is more straight on. And so if, there, if there's subtle directional shifts, he might not see it as much. Yeah. Um, but um, from my point of view, it's clearer. Yeah, um, which is great. So I'm going to rely on yeah. Erica for that reason. All right. Well, that was our 20-minute session. All righty. Right. All right, everyone. We'll be back in You're just a second. You're doing so well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
can you lift your chin a little bit? A little bit more? Yep. How are you doing, Lewis? Yeah, that's great. Perfect. I'm going to continue my ghost sketch here. This is... Rosie's going to watch. Yeah, Rosie came up and... I'm just Judge. making a little ghost. <laughs> She's like, really? <laughs> sure about that? Sure about that, Mark? <laughs> well, we have some people who are sharing what they're working on. Barbara hey. is saying she's working on three different pencil portraits of a husband and a wife. And Emily is saying, not exactly the same as you guys, but still having fun. I'm a one-woman assembly line making little painting kits using a stamp I carved the other day. Yay for Christmas prep. Oh, I did wow. see that on her Instagram, actually. It's very cool to see that. And let's see, we have Anna D. Artistry. They said, did my first pencil portrait sketch today, got my first oil painting set, was into watercolors all these years. And we have Jean who is saying, I don't have a model, so I'm just trying to paint along with you. I took a screenshot of this beautiful model. Awesome. Wonderful. Makes it easy when you have a beautiful model, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Yet the more challenging. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's like, gosh, I gotta make her look hot now. <laughs> I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> At flames. I like yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. Right now, I've got I got you in spooky vibes. I actually really like how you're drawing or your painting is starting out, Louis. It's mm. very spooky. And then Christopher is asking, where can I upload a, a portrait I'm struggling on? We do have a channel in the Discord group that's I believe it's called like Give and Get Critiques. You can post your image on there, and then other members of the group can give you some feedback. And starting next month, Lewis does these open critique nights for the people who are subscribers on our platform, where you can upload your image, and then he can give you a in-depth critique. So if that's something you're interested in, you would just have to um, go on the East Oaks website, and I could put a link directly in the chat, but you would just receive an email where you would upload your image to a Dropbox folder, and then whenever the time comes for the open critique night, Louis will critique it. That's it. Easy. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> I think another thing I might do like afterwards is kind of like just soften everything, kind of like you were talking about, Erica. Mm -hmm as like a fun practice for the next stage of the painting. Not because you failed horribly in your painting. And yes. <laughs> need to well, I, I, I've been wanting to continue to experiment more on like having the ghost image and mm -hmm. so that the next day kind of build in a, a level of freshness. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about her rotating a little bit towards you? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, rotate just a little bit this way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. How's that? That's good. Okay. We have a comment from Mariel. They're saying your palette, which is Lewis's palette, I think, looks like a profile of a woman from the angle on the screen. Oh, like where the, yeah? Yep, where all the paint piles at, it looks like the profile. Nice. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I make portraits on my palette before I make portraits on the panel. You're just that good. That's it. <laughs> you know, going trying to go on uh, apply for the most interesting man, Dosaki's most interesting <laughs> man. You know, I can count to infinity twice. <laughs> we have a lot of people joining. We have someone from Turkey, Amir or Amire from Turkey. We have Anand from India. He says, saying, hi, you guys are an inspiration. Kudos. And we also have a question from Felipe asking, are you currently offering in-studio workshops? Uh, we don't have any on the books yet, but there, I really want to do a in-person workshop. So um, stay tuned because I want to get that on the books. Uh, but we, uh, 
intend to also in the future when we have guest artists to do like a live stream as well as an in-person workshop when they come. So uh, stay tuned because that will be something hopefully that we get going in the future here. Mm-hmm. And for anyone who may not know, we are based in Raleigh, North Carolina. So just keep that in mind. Rosie is hanging out right behind you, Erica. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> what a good girl. Aww. I get we get three whole days. <laughs> so excited. You could take your time, no rush. Of course you say that and then like I as know, soon as three like, whole days ends, you're like, wow, I wish I had more time. Always. This is partially, you know, I've already said this, but this is partially an experiment also to see if I paint this the way I would paint one live stream and then like add to it later. How far could I get? Mm. We have a comment from someone named Master Monday, and they're saying, can you guys come to the UK, please? LOL. We'd love Actually, to. That would be so much fun. I have a portrait that I have to do in um, in Yorkshire. Really? Yep. And so um, hopefully I will be going over there may- maybe within a year or so. And if I could... Man, if I could organize one, that would be awesome. So stay tuned. Maybe I can figure out a way to make that happen. That'd be cool. Lewis Carr, international. Dun, dun, dun. International superstar. (laughs) Who counts to infinity twice. (laughs) We also have a comment from Anand saying, come to India. So we got lots of places to go. world tour. Mm -hmm. East Oaks world tour. (laughs) It'll be a, a month-long thing. It'll be four-week workshops with one week with Erica, one week with Tina, That'd be one so week with fun. me. It'll be a blast. One thing I'm not um, concerned too much about at this stage is like how pretty the drawing is. Mm, like I'm mm-hmm. making sure that things are meaningful and... I'm getting my placements right. Um, I'm going to be painting over all of this. So I'm more concerned about setting myself up for future layers. And I say this as a reminder for myself (laughs) not to get too worried if I'm like, oh, that looks weird. I'm not done yet. It's funny because I think a lot of people are like, oh, Lewis, you're a great teacher. And it's like, I'm just talking out loud of things I need to do. (laughs) (laughs) Teaching works really well for me because like I'm already a very much a verbal processor. Mm -hmm. Tina gets the brunt in of it almost every morning. She comes in. It's like, okay, what are we going to do today? We're going to work on this. Okay, maybe not that. Maybe we'll work on this. All right, no, never mind. I'm changing my mind as we speak. You know. She just hangs out until I figure it out. Yeah, I just, like, stand there, and then you kind of rifle through three things in your head, and I just patiently (laughs) listen to wait and see what sticks. (laughs) Then finally, I'm like, okay, final answer. This is what we're doing. (laughs) I'm glad I have very patient friends around me. It's funny because you're a very verbal processor and I'm an internal processor. So sometimes you'll just like look at me and you're like, what's going on in there? It's like, talk (laughs) to me. What's what's going on? There's a lot of things going on in here, but not coming out. Tina's a vault. (laughs) (laughs) Just um, sometimes it's hard to 
get what's in your brain out. So I'm kind of envious of people who are verbal Shoot. processors because I can't do that. I am envious of all of you nonverbal processors because I say too many things out loud and then people think that I'm committing to that thing when I'm just trying to spitball. Mm. Um, and it has gotten me in trouble more than one occasion. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover. I don't particularly like painting the, the lips at the beginning until I get the drawing solid because it's one of the few things that move um, because they're, they're not attached to bone structure. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's usually the last stage for me. So I'm just kind of getting what is the general color down first. I'm also just making sure the corners of the mouth are like decently placed, um, mm -hmm. more in ter terms of height, mm -hmm. just to make sure that from the chin to the center line of the mouth to the nose to the eyes, like that general placement is decent um, because, like you said, they move around um, a lot, just naturally, and so I don't want to commit to something that. Uh, I'm making sure I'm leaving enough room for flexibility is what I'm trying to do. Plus, I find them to be, they're so, I'm, I always struggle with the mouth every oh, time. Yeah, mm. every me too. Time. I always think of that one John Singer Sargent quote, and I don't quite know mm -hmm. which one, but yeah. it's, it's like, always something with the mouth, yeah. I think is the quote. It's like a portrait is something where it's like slightly wrong with the mouth, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. give or take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a story that someone told me. I don't remember if it was John Singer Sargent. I want to say it was, but there was like a, he was painting a woman who was sitting for him and it was like one of these like, you know, wealthy women. And apparently she kept complaining about the way he painted her mouth. And then at one point he was like, maybe I should just paint no mouth on you and it'd be more pleasant for the both of us. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I've never so heard that. Sad. That's I, I would love to. You know, I feel like Sar just Sergeant was a sassy guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like if if you have the cojones to sit there in front of Theodore Roosevelt and and like tell him mm -hmm. that, you know, he doesn't know anything about art or whatever it was he said. <laughs> um, you know, you're you're, uh, you've got some kahanis. It's very, very sassy. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Not committing to this and just kind of putting a bit of a shadow shape. Have the, a small bit of like what we call here the butterfly lighting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, And um, just making sure I get it in the right spot. Rosie's right behind you, Louie. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> She's but just finding to, people to sit by. Hate to step on my baby. We have a comment from, I believe it's pronounced Emery, but I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, from Turkey. And they're saying, I learned so much from you guys. I wish to be there. My dream is to work with talented friends. Oh, come on down. Love to have you. Mm -hmm. Hope one day we get a chance to meet. And we have a question from Barbara. She is asking, at this stage of the drawing and solidifying, are you searching to match all the values? No, I'm more concerned about like the the spherical or egg-shaped form and to get the value of the dimensionality of the entire form. So it, it kind of, you have to, in order to like understand that context, you sometimes have to like get stuff down first. And so that's more of what I'm doing. I'm, um, it's not about the accuracy, accuracy of like the values of each plane yet for me. It's, it's more of like the general form. And then at what point will you be getting like more specific to the value? Um, well, it is. 
I think that it, it is like I am trying to get the overarching value and to get more specific with it um, comes with after, kind of after the drawing, after I start like making more decisions about the identity of her. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now I'm, I'm worried more about like making sure that the whole thing has a, I don't know, kind of a connectivity to it. Mm-hmm. We have a question from Felipe for, I'm assuming the both of you, are all of your portrait commissions done from life or do you also use photographs? I do both Um, and it just depends on the scenario um, with the family. Um, I I actually call it two different products. I I say it's, I have a life product that they can uh, selection they can choose, and then I have one that is um, is one that's done from photo or done in the studio. Uh, so I call it studio painting and life painting. And then the life painting, it's like a one and done. You know, it's four or five days, and once once I'm done, that's what you get. That's the product, and it has a different energy to it than the ones I do from photo. So the ones I do from photo are like far tighter and more refined. The ones I do from life have a little bit more energy in the mark making. And, uh, but they also have, typically have a spirit to them that, that's hard to capture with just a few photos. So um, I tend to, uh, I tend to enjoy doing the ones from life more. Uh, it keeps your practices sharp, hones your skills more. And switch over to some comers. And we have three minutes left in this session. Okay. Well, maybe I won't then. I'll do that <laughs> next, se- next session. Do either of you have like a a goal that you want to reach for for the end of this session? Like, is there a certain stage that you want the painting Mm. to be at so you can better set yourself up for the following day? Absolutely. Um, I want to make sure my drawing is decent. I will likely um, cover the background, not too heavy, but I will probably do a layer on the background and go do another pass over the shadow shape, the hair, and probably have a general skin tone for the face. And so we're about halfway through, right? Um, it's 3.15, so a little less than half. Okay, so we'll see if I make it that far. But the idea is um, if I can have a general skin tone on the Shadow shape or the shadow on the face and general skin tone um, on where the light is coming in. That way, I can clarify the drawing a little bit more. Um, I would that would be great. So I'm not going to get into her uh, hand really or her uh, clothing. I'm just making sure that the drawing is solid for her face. Um, I'm not even as interested in getting the the detail of the drawing done. I'm not that that's what Erica was saying. I'm just making my point. And uh, that, is it time? We have 54 seconds left. Okay. So, uh, but it's more for the basics and foundational shapes and color harmony is uh, close. For me, and then if I get I get a really good foundational likeness where it kind of looks like it still looks like the person if they were like a hundred feet away, then then um, that part I feel like would be successful, and um, I'll have set myself up for the next phase of this painting. So. I think for me because I. 
I'm a bit slower for, than you for portraits. Mm -hmm. um, I have to make sure I have a oh, 100%. rigid um, schedule in my brain of what phase I need to be at in order for this to progress decently. That's how I teach. I teach mm -hmm. always foundational drawing first day. Second day is value. And third day is color. Uh, it's a, it's just a great way to structure. So you're, I'm just, uh, I'm doing oh. a fearful thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. I'm just facing my fears. Okay, uh, everybody, we will be back in just a second.
Um, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. And? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, which, uh, yeah, whichever you prefer. Yeah, that works for me. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, while we were on the break, we did get some questions regarding Erica's Black Mirror. Oh. So would you be willing to explain what that is and why of you use course. it? Of course. This is the Black Mirror. The it's black. just welding mm. glass. Or, oh, yeah, welding mm. glass, a lens. And I got it from Home Depot. Uh, I put tape, awesome tape around it. And so that way if I drop it, it doesn't uh, explode into a million pieces. Um, I use it all the time. I love it for value compression, color compression. Um, that way I can see the big light effect and not get too caught up into details since it does basically squinting for me. Um, I use it a few different ways. I use it straight on like this, just so I can compare the model versus um, my drawing. I look at just my painting for, just to make sure that when I'm putting something down, it's doing what I thought it's doing. And I use it upside down as well. And this is really great for uh, flow of light, uh, values, colors, etc. cetera. Um, excellent tool, use it all the time. Um, so I am about to just soften everything now that I have a bit down and then really pay attention to the form relationships of the values. Uh, on this one. And then once I kind of get that down, I hopefully I'll have enough down to where I can start working on like creating an outline for the rest of the painting. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I, I know as soon as I say that kind of stuff, I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll do this and then that and this and then that. One thing I'm making sure I'm doing is that I have a, a good placement of the ear. Mm. Um, it's a valuable um, piece of information because of it, it communicates the tilt very well when you're looking at it in relationship to your eye socket and nose and mouth etc um, it's also the whole of the ear is generally halfway up the head and so it's a good um, parameter to see if you know if this is too high or too low like um, whether your proportion it's a good like anchor for proportions um, making sure that my relationships are working. Yeah. Especially because it also, like you were saying, it, it helps the rotation of the head mm -hmm. of where, where they're positioning themselves, looking upward or downward. Um, so it's great. We have a comment from Emily. She's saying, I remember Lewis talking about portrait commissions at Portrait Society. His quote about references without the kids smiling with teeth, can't take away their dignity, has stuck with me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it, it, it has helped so much in inspiring people to, to get a, a painting that is more poetic where their person is the lead role of the piece of poetry versus thinking about it as just uh, a time and space of the identity of that, of that person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because I feel like there's portraits in museums that are just incredible works of art. And um, so often, we, we make a portrait as if it's just like a photograph of a child, you know, at a certain age that we need to like make sure it's recorded. And um, we have lost a little bit of the inspiration to make it its own work of art that is beyond just that. Um, and we're so influenced by what we see today and, um, you know, everything from just like 
preschool pictures, you know. And people have forgotten vision. And it's your job to cast vision. So because, like Henry Ford says, you know, if you ask the audience what they want, they would have asked for a faster horse. And it is your job to show them, like, what is really possible. Um, so... I love that. I love that you've remembered that. Don't take away their dignity. Mm -hmm. The dignity of the child that they're they're more they're more than one emotion. They're a culmination of happy and sad and everything in between. You want to capture the spirit of the child. I love your hair. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm, oh, I can't wait to like paint more of it. I want to make sure I set myself up well so I can um, do it justice. Do it justice, yeah. It's good to have that restraint. It's hard because you want to go for the things that you're most excited about. Oh, man. That kind of discipline is, is the hardest. Sometimes um, when I'm doing any painting, I'll write on sticky notes what my priorities are, and then I'll put them mm, on my it's not a bad easel idea. so it's front and center. And it might be, maybe it's something like, I have to work on this particular goal for the day, make sure I have something done. But it also could be um, more poetic, where I'm making sure certain... Um, like there's certain words or beautiful things that I notice. I want to make sure that those are communicated. So it's almost like keeping my priorities straight uh, poetically as well. Mm. There's something about what you said that has stuck an earworm in my head of the song, Some days when I'm awfully low And the world is something I will feel aglow Just thinking of you Everybody thought that this is karaoke, right? <laughs> oh, never mind. Your singing voice is much better than mine. <laughs> Erica promised karaoke to, for us uh, <laughs> for one of our, our holiday get-togethers. I will gladly cheer everyone on. <laughs> I um, have no problem with that. We had this conversation the other day mm -hmm. about what would your karaoke song be. Right. Yeah. We said we're doing it for our birthday, right? Which is... Uh, very soon. Yeah, we're all going to perform for Erica. I think that's what we're going to do. I would appreciate that. <laughs> I will. That's what we say, but my the song true will, secret. My song will be silence. <laughs> <laughs> the true secret is, is we're actually going to just throw her up there as a surprise in front of a live studio audience. You'll watch me walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alyssa is saying that earworm just traveled straight across the globe, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, it's a good song. I'm, I'm, if I'm going to have an earworm, I'm, I'm glad it's that one. We also have a comment from Christine Young, and she says, love this series and have joined Atelier Live, dot, oh. dot, dot. What oh. brush has a pink handle? So they're asking oh, which, what yeah. brush that one is. That's the Michael Klein series, and... Um, I don't know if they still have the pink handle. Didn't you say you got some, Tina? I, I managed to like find them. Yeah. Oh, you did. You you got like the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so ago. they must still yeah. have them. I think I bought mine at Porch Society. They had them there. I don't know if they still have them on their website, but I'm sure if you reach out to Rosemary & Co., maybe on Instagram or on the email, they'd probably be willing to sell you one. They definitely have the brushes still. It's just some of them, they at one point switched over to black handles. 
And I think the new ones that have the ro the pink handles are like floral series or something. Mm -hmm. Like they call them something different, I think. Yeah, oh, but they have different shapes. Say Rose of England pointed series 201. Mm -hmm. And I have but one that's like thing. a flat. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. That came in the set, and Michael Klein's set doesn't have the flat, so I don't know how they changed it, but I love those brushes. I think at one point they discontinued it, calling it the Michael Klein set, um, and maybe they just recently reinstated it mm -hmm. um, as that. But uh, it is a rosemary brush, and they're very affordable. It's a really great brush to have, I because I, I'm using them too. And here in this painting, I, you'll see that I have a few as well. But I also have a set that has a black handle that is the same exact set. So um, don't be fooled by just the stem. But I do love that it's pink. Yeah. And that was, uh, I remember that being a request of Michael's to not make them pink because he was <laughs> like, I don't want my line to be pink, and they're like, but it's for flowers. And he's like, nah, yeah. Make them black. <laughs> oh, Christina's saying, ah, have the floral series, but with the black candles. Okay, so, so you have them. Mm -hmm. You're ready to rock and roll. And then Alyssa says, the pink handle is from Rosemary & Co. It's now called Series 201. There you go. That is the power of community right there, ladies and gentlemen. But for some reason, the pink just feels more special. They are the same brush. <laughs> Isn't that that with the evergreen uh -huh. as well? Mm -hmm. It's the same as the ivory or something just like that? dyed, yeah. Yep. You got it. But I'm glad Christine has joined the Atelier Live. I hope she's enjoying it so yeah. far. Oh, that's just wonderful. Um, Yes, let me know. Uh, submit some stuff for the open critique nights. I'd love to see what you're working on. You have now two places to submit your work to get critiques. You can get your community critiques from the Discord, and you can get um, critiques from me monthly uh, on the platform. I've actually considered having guests on to critique with me on those nights. So you might see some familiar faces in the future. Keep it fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. More conversational. Yep. Yeah. That'd be fun. And we have about seven and a half minutes left on this session. And it is 3.34, so we have an hour and a half left for today. Then you have two more days to work on it. Woo! Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Oh, that's right. She's going to have her hand up. Why am I doing that? I was like painting the left, the your right side of your neck, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I haven't gotten that in. Oh, it's because she usually has her hand there. Don't you don't have to put your hand up. You're good. He's just verbal processing. Yep, that's you're you're witnessing right now, ladies and gentlemen, the verbal processing at its finest. Okay, then that will. Okay, so I'm going to soften all of the stuff in the face and then start working on the nose and lips.
We have a comment from Emily. She's saying, I make myself a list of things to fix first thing in the morning when I'm looking at a commission with those fresh eyes. So nice to be able to tick things off. Such a good idea That's to have excellent. a to fix list is great, especially with the fresh pair of eyes. It's funny because sometimes when I come in the studio, like in the morning, sometimes I'm scared to look at my painting because I'm like, I don't really remember how it ended up looking the other day. And I'm just like, the anticipation to see how, how it went with fresh eyes is sometimes scary. Mm. But it's usually better than I remember because, you know, at the end of the day, your eyes get tired and sometimes you get a little frustrated and you tend to see things worse than they really are. At least for me. Yeah, the funny thing is, is that's like the first thing I want to do. Like I will come down here like in my PJs <laughs> if like there's something that I've been working on hard just to see if, you know, I don't know, that my eyes see it differently almost in a hopeful way. Come on, please let it be better than I thought it was, mm -hmm. you know. Um, then sometimes it's like, nope, nope, still bad. <laughs> or, or it's like, okay, no, it was right where it was. Yeah. It kind of reminds me, at least this might be like my own personal experience, but when you're little and when you woke up the morning of Christmas and then you know that there's presents under the tree, but you don't want to look just yet, you know, I would go to like my sister's room and on my way to my sister's room, I would avoid looking downstairs so I couldn't see the Christmas tree. So I wouldn't be able to see what <laughs> presents were underneath it. So I, I feel like that's a similar feeling where it's like the excitement of wanting to see, but you know, also not wanting to. For some reason. Prolonging, yeah. the Prolonging yeah. savoring the moment. <laughs> Tina, I've noticed that that's part of, such a part of your personality trait because there's multiple times where you've talked about uh, a similar situation where you, like, for example, like playing a video game that mm. you love. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I don't want to finish it because I want to savor the enjoyment of being able to play this game. And then I just don't play it. Yeah. <laughs> Because you don't want it to end. Yeah. It's kind of cute. <laughs> I have finished or have not finished many games like Zelda. I have still not finished. Um, one of these days I will, but it's just so good. I don't want it to end. I'm sure that there's somebody out in our group who has also participated in playing that Zelda game. Yeah, please let us know because Erica and I are big fans and it's usually just the two of us <laughs> <laughs> like geeking out about the Zelda game. For a while, it was every day like, oh, what did you yeah. do today? Oh, how far did you get? It was so cute. It was so fun. <laughs> I think one of my favorite days that has ever happened is when we came back from Port to Society <laughs> and like after that long travel day was the day that Zelda was released and it yes. was the best day. We were so excited. <laughs> day ever yeah let me know if anyone else also plays zelda we can all be friends we'll put a hashtag zelda group in the discord <laughs> but i also grew up playing the sims and I think some of you, yeah, Eric has also played The Sims. And I would always spend all the time that I ever played the game hacking it. So first of all, so I can get more <laughs> money so I can buy the things that I want to buy. Um, and I would build like a giant three-story house that was just absolutely gorgeous. And I always gave myself a nice art studio, pool <laughs> in the backyard. I really went all in. That's awesome. And I miss the Sims generation. Um, mm. I played Command and Conquer was my game as a kid, which they made only a million different versions of that game. Um, but that and then later on in college, my brother and I got into playing the World of Warcraft games. Mm. Um, so, and I'm actually happy to say that that eventually subsided because that that consumed so much of my life that I, I was like, no, I think uh, I think I'm good for now. It really is addicting at a certain point because you really want to keep leveling up and keep playing. 
Yeah. It really sucks you in. Really does. And watch out. We have just 14 seconds left in this session. Well, I'm going to like finish the entire lip section in 14 seconds. Yeah, now's a good time yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's time. So we're going to take a five minute break and we will be back shortly.
All right, everyone. Back to it. Can you turn? Yes. That's good for me. How's yeah, that work for yeah. you? Do that you looks good. That looks good. Any adjustments you need nope. to make? Okay. No, nope, that looks good. Beautiful. I just have to change the whole paint. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa says that Erica could release a five-minute video on a loop of her wielding a palette knife and mark uh, it as right? artist therapy. Seriously. Right? <laughs> I feel Been bad saying sometimes because it's like I hear when I do like I just like a scrape of the whole thing and just I if I know it's loud in my studio, I'm like, I imagine you guys can hear it too. So. I don't hey man, mind. there's some ASMR people out there who probably <laughs> love it. It is a ASMR, right? Uh -huh. Okay, I should make sure I say it right. <laughs> This old millennial needs like to know all the new terms. It's good to have a Gen Z on the team. Yep, Gen Z keep, keeps me keeps me young. Well, Gene is saying this model is doing a fabulous job. Yeah. We agree. <laughs> yeah. I am inclined to agree. And Felipe is asking, do you color check with the palette knife when creating your color strings? I don't uh, because I paint more relationally and more on a total tonal harmony than I do with color matching. Um, and also with the idea and concepts of form, you know, no color is exactly true and your light might be different than the lighting up there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it can limit your ability, it doesn't limit your ability necessarily, but it limits your options later. Um, it's a great tool at the beginning when you're learning though, to because to try to mix accurately is what it helps with the most in my opinion. And for me, I do it not so much because I'm trying to color match, I'm more just making sure I'm in the realm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like if I'm making something and I'm thinking it's one color, I'll put it up and just make sure it's not like way too red or way mm -hmm. too yellow. So it's less about matching and more about the vibe, for there lack of go. better words. I think ultimately it's important to remember it needs to make sense on your painting. So mm -hmm. sometimes it might look one way on your palette um, and one way mm -hmm. when you're holding it up, depending yep. on how the lighting is for your palette knife. And so, but what really matters is the relationships you create on the painting. It's absolutely right. I was doing some mixing, I don't know if, um, since I was doing it during the break, but I made this shadow mixture here. I originally made and moved it over here because I was using originally transparent red, transparent red oxide and ultramarine, um, maybe with like some of this uh, mayonnaise violet. But then when I put it down, it was just way too red because it was trans so transparent. So I switched to my English red here and ultramarine just so I could have a little bit more opacity um, and clarity when I'm putting that color down. Um, and now I'm liking it a lot better. It'll be so, the perfect color tomorrow. Hmm? It'll be the perfect color, the transparent red oxide would be the perfect exactly. color tomorrow because you'll exactly. have you know, paint already down. Yes. And so even though I like to work more transparently on the initial layers, um, I prefer, or I needed a little bit more coverage than what that layer was doing. Do you mind lowering your chin slightly? Yep. yep. Perfect. I could see you in the background. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll err on the side of um, thinner paint. Thinner meaning less quantity of paint. Um, I'm not adding anything to this. 
uh, in order to achieve that effect um, of transparency, even though I'm using not as transparent pigments. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you got it. Words. Looks like Louie's putting in the lips. I'm just putting a landmark or two, just to start gaining a little bit of context. Kind of have to, we're getting closer to the sessions, you know? Mm -hmm. Getting closer to the end. It's almost four o'clock, it's 3.54. Okay. That's Okay, we're okay. <laughs> Deep breath. It's all good. This can be a tricky stage when you're starting to cover your initial drawing because mm -hmm. um, you're going to lose the information you put down. Mm -hmm. No worries. We'll get it back. I think that's always the most frustrating for me because it's like I did all the work yeah. and now I have to do all the work again. There's this fruit fly that keeps harassing me over here. <laughs> and I think you need to do your apple cider thing. <laughs> oh, yep. yeah. I'll, I'll bust open because my traps. He has been flying on my face and it's not fun. How rude. I know, right? Personal space. You know, I do normally hear that noise in the background, but it's kind of like I don't really pick up on it. Uh -huh. But it's really relaxing. It is kind oh, of relaxing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> like sometimes I'll hear it like in between because I always have music mm -hmm. on my headphones, and sometimes I'll hear it like in between. It's just like some gentle scraping. Yeah, yeah. it's just kind of calming in a way. Good. I'm glad it's not like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> no. no, no, no. It's kind of like oh, that's Erica. Erica's working. Like that's what I I relate it to. <laughs> Mixing my colors at the beginning is, it is one of my favorite stages of the painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a sweet comment from Alyssa for me. She's saying, doing an amazing job, Tina, as always on the chat. Thank you, Alyssa. That's very sweet of you. Agree. Yep. Tina you know, always does such a good job. If you give me some jokes, I'll play some sound effects. <laughs> Could you put your rest your hand on your or put your rest your head on your hand real quick? I just want to see where your head falls in relationship. Because I'm thinking about like just at least getting the shoulders in. I just want to make sure the tilts are similar and
We have a comment from Gail. Hi, Gail. I haven't bit. seen you in a while. Um, she says, we've had swarms of blue ash aphids on our sunny days. They're periwinkle blue with little frothy white tutus and fairy-like wings. They're delightful. And I just looked up a picture, and they do look cute. And I'm not usually a fan of bugs at all, but I don't mind these guys. <laughs> they do like look like they're wearing tutus. Oh. These guys and the rosy maple moths are, I think, my favorite because the rosy maple moths, for those who do not know, are pink, pink and orange. And it's just insane how that's a real insect. You know, I had a grasshopper on top of my car the other day. Did yeah. you really? All the way on top of my car. I, had, I How picked dare him, him up and took him off. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I didn't want him flying off on the road. But, <laughs> you know, how does it jump all the way up there? They fly. Grasshoppers fly. Really? Mm-hmm. He was a little guy. Like a, like a baby. Yeah, you've ever seen Bugs Life? Once, when I was very little. Flick, or not Flick. I don't remember the name of the. I the thought villain. they just jumped. I didn't know they fly. Yeah. Hmm. Now I'm more scared of them. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> oh, I, I, I do what I can. <laughs> we have Frentis joining. They say hello from Denmark. Hello. Thanks All for joining. In Denmark. This is the stage where I have to remind myself not to get ahead of myself mm. and worry if, um, you know, remembering I'm only working with like three colors here. So I have my general light, I have the shadow, and I have the dark of her hair. And so because of that, I'm not trying to have it look like a finished, fully rendered, colorful painting yet. I'm only working on the drawing, and so sometimes um, it can be a little unnerving at this stage. But keep, keep, I have to keep remembering my priorities. Mm -hmm. I do tend to get impatient at this state, like start, because mm -hmm. it's like, why doesn't it look good? Because yeah. I'm, I'm very much about the finished product. I'm not so much of a process person. So I have to be very patient and just grin and bear it until it gets better. Keep remembering I'm setting a foundation for future layers. So, mm -hmm. And then all the times that I've broken things up too early, I've regretted it. So mm -hmm. I end up having to unify them back again. So if I can lean on the side of unity at this stage, it sets me up better for the future. Yeah. This is the stage where I'm painting what I'm seeing when I squint. Mm. So that helps me know what my priorities are. Oh, well, we just got a question from Melissa asking, do you keep this layer in just three tones for Erica? I keep it basic. Yeah, basically. It'll be whatever the background is. Um, and then I have darks and then a general light. I might use a highlight if... Mm because sometimes they're really useful for drawing purposes um, in terms of shapes and organizing where they are. Um, but I try to keep it limited to maybe three, four max. Mm -hmm. And we have about five and a half minutes left for this session.
Are you reorganizing your club? I am. <laughs> yep. Um, it's a bad habit to keep the whole thing in a claw situation when it actually is just as easy to to um, put them all together. Mm. I always find, I because I usually don't do the claw, I usually keep my brushes down on my easel little um, compartment thing, but I find that I hold all of my stress and tension in my left hand, so I'll grip the paper towel really hard, and then when I have the brushes, I'll just squeeze them, mm -hmm. and it hurts my fingers, because <laughs> they're like in between the fingers, so... I can't do the claw, but maybe one day. Um, <laughs> Just hold all the tension in my hands. I'd rather hold the tension in my hands than in my shoulders. I, mm. I tend to have all my tension in my shoulders, and I just like I'm full of knots by the mm. end of the day. We should hire a personal masseuse. Yeah. For Stokes. I think that'd be a good idea. I think, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. <laughs> you buying? <laughs> Um, I think we could find it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. You know, dream big. Yeah, that's Maybe right. Maybe one day. I think it's an excellent, excellent idea. Start a GoFundMe for East Oak Studios to get a personal masseuse. <laughs> Definitely a priority on the budget. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how relaxed we'd all be. There's this scene in, I don't know if anyone has seen Grey's Anatomy, but there's the, you know, the ER section where like the surgery ward where all of the doctors are in Grey's Anatomy. And then in the building over is the dermatology department. And in the dermatology department, everyone there is pretty. They have their own personal masseuse who's giving them massages while they are also working. And I think that's what we need to do. And that's how I imagine your brother, Lewis. It absolutely <laughs> is true. My brother's a dermatologist, and he you, you walk in, and everyone's gorgeous, <laughs> including him. You know, uh, it, is, it is a true, I think it is a true, accurate demographic and statement. Mm -hmm. And they're very zen, it's very chill. It's funny because my other brother-in-law, I have a lot of brothers and brother-in-laws that are doctors and attorneys. And so we're just going to go ahead and throw that out there. And I have another brother-in-law who is in his final year of med school, and he s said they had like a lecture, a group of lecturers that were dermatologists come, and he's like, I mean, they were like in their 40s, and they looked younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, they got some sort of secret sauce. Mm -hmm. They're doing something. We have two minutes left in this session. Oh, and maybe while we're on break, I'm gonna give a question to the chat, but if anyone's being anything for Halloween or if your kids are being anything for Halloween that you wanna share, we'd love to know. I'm being Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Still working on my artist killer costume. <laughs> my serial killer as an artist. So far, Abbott <laughs> Slayer is my favorite. <laughs> is my favorite uh, killer name, Abbott Slayer. Is that a fair? Yeah. Mm. Unless somebody comes up with one better, always willing to hear the audience. They have some good ideas. They do, they always have good ideas. The 
this is like a really good challenge because of my side has some shadow shapes, but mm -hmm. not a whole, whole lot. So, um, and it's so easy to like fall on shadow shapes like a crutch and be like, okay, what are that's you trying a, to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> Only because I chose the side of. Oh, <laughs> that has the shadows. Uh, we try to say, Lewis. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this one for sure. <laughs> this, like, this is a great angle. Oh, Let's do this, this shot. <laughs> this Are would we be done? Great for a reality TV show. <laughs> yep, and exactly. <laughs> have the drama, <laughs> have the drama moment. Um, timer is done. So, model, taking a break. Taking a break. And we will be back in five minutes, everyone.
There and you go. Back. Get it out now. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, thank you. I love the colors in your background. With oh, how it thank you. The face looks really cool. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And this is only day one. Yeah. Mean. It's a foundation. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a comment from Emily. This is regards to the Halloween costume um, question that I put out. She says, Tina, that's awesome. In high school, the band dressed up for Halloween, and I was Jack Sparrow, and my friend informed me that she was slightly disturbed that she was attracted to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's awesome. He is a very charismatic character, so, you know. It's it's hard not to just be attracted to just Jack Sparrow in general. Yeah, you know? just so. like the charisma, the the confidence that he has. <laughs> yep, savvy. It'll be great. I'm very excited to see Brian dressed up. I mean, as Jack I'm enjoying Sparrow. that both you and Brian are <laughs> oh, both yeah, they're going both to be Jack Sparrow. We're I mean, both come being on. Jack Sparrow. Yeah, That's and I idea. think I honestly think. He just wants to wear eyeliner. And I'm fine with that. I'm yeah, going to yeah, put yeah. eyeliner on him. <laughs> perfect, perfect opportunity. Yeah. And Sam McLemore is also in the chat. She's saying, these Sam. lives are great. Thanks for working hard to put all this together. Oh, thank you, Sam. Can't wait to see you soon. Mm-hmm. Coming up. Yeah, right around the corner. Right, we're going to see if I can't. It's one of those things where I, I'm debating whether I should like leave the hand for tomorrow or do it now. You said we have one session or two sessions? Um, I think two. So this one and then another one. Okay. Maybe okay. a little like longer last one. We'll see. A longer last one. Mm -hmm. Maybe like an extra five. I'm not sure. I'm never good with time like that. So <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> okay. That's part of the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put Tina back we'll here. We'll see how much time we have. <laughs> I do love the sweater that our model is wearing. It looks very warm and cozy. Mm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Makes me want to go put my robe on. It's that feeling to it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, right? 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 You're going to pull that over. I'm like, oh, so bundled in the studio. Yeah, you were. I had my blanket scarf, you the whole were. thing. And I came over and I was like, are you cold? And I didn't even need to ask because I could tell with the your scarf. The question wasn't even out of your mouth. I was like, yes. <laughs> are you? Yes. I really like the hand position right now. I'm wondering if I should go for it. You going to risk it for the biscuit? Risk it for the biscuit. I'll give you a little applause for motivation. Yeah. It won't really it work because you can't hear so, it. So um, if you want to decide that that's the position you want, I'm cool with it. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. going to have to remember that's the position you've got your, your hand in. And here we go. Risk, risking it for the biscuit. it. <laughs> For this session, we have 15 and a half minutes, just so you know.
You know what I think would make this more fun and way not more challenging is if I were to tell you guys riddles while you did this and you had to figure out your riddles. <laughs> riddles? Uh, I had to figure mm-hmm. out the riddles while, while, while we do it. While you're painting, yeah. while you're talking, while you're trying yeah, to figure out. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Not. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do love a good riddle, though. I, I absolutely love a good riddle. Now I'm curious about these riddles. <laughs> I might have to look up some riddles. Okay, we'll do riddles and then we'll have the chat also guessing to see if they know the answer. That way it's not all on you guys. Thank you. Please. <laughs> I'm painting hands right now. Let's see, riddles for kids, riddles for adults, riddles for <laughs> middle riddles schoolers, for <laughs> riddles for kids. Okay, here's one. What has many teeth but cannot bite? And this is for everyone, so take your time. A saw. A comb? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. A comb? I'm uh-huh. usually not good at these. <laughs> What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? <laughs> I got no idea. <laughs> I'll let it stew for a little bit. And I'll repeat it for the chat if anyone wants to participate in this riddle. What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? And for this painting right now, I'm working on getting the mouth, nose, chin relationship. And this usually takes me a minute (laughs) to uh, get it looking accurate. But I'm trying to keep my values close together so I don't have that bothering me while I'm painting. Um, Better to err on the side of unity. One of the many reasons why I'm happy we have a couple days. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully, be able to work out um, a decent mouth by the end of it. Doesn't it kind of like lift the weight from your shoulders knowing that you don't have to have this done in three hours? Yes, for sure. It's like it doesn't mean I can relax, but it means that it's not quite as intense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, we had some people guess for the riddle, and again, it's what do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? And the answer is their middle names, which is the word the. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of like a joke (laughs) and a riddle in one. As a corny riddle. (laughs) Tell that to Reader's Digest. (laughs) (laughs) Complain to them. I'm 
how much time do we have left? We have nine minutes. Nine and a half minutes. Another riddle for you in the chat. What starts with a T, ends with a T, and has T in it? Teapot. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was it. I, you there got there you before go. I did. <laughs> I was like, oh, you got it. I was sitting there, I was thinking like teacup, tea. Teapot. That's awesome. <laughs> Good job. I guess we'll keep you as a model. <laughs> Beauty and brains. <laughs> exactly. How's that hand coming, Louise? Why do artists do their suits so they don't get arthritis? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. You'll have to repeat that to the audience, Tina. Yeah, can you, can you say it, Louis? I couldn't hear the beginning part. Why do artists need a masseuse? Why? So they don't get arthritis. <laughs> Paintings are looking great so far, guys. Ooh, just keep me posted on the time on this one, just trying to... Five and a half minutes. Can you drop your fingers down just a little bit? There you go, you have it, yeah, there you go. Let's see.
What kind of coat is always wet when you put it on? And let it stew for a little bit. Mm, Alyssa got it. A coat of paint. Nice. Very thematic. Mm -hmm. Love this. Everybody's got thematic uh, riddles. I can't. I can't even click complete <laughs> sentences right now. <laughs> thematic uh, riddles. And Barbara said nail polish, which is technically also correct. Two minutes left in this session. Twenty seconds left. It's getting down to the wire, Louis. Cool. I made it enough. That's all. <laughs> so that's good. All right. Well, on that note, we are going to take a model break, and we will be back in five minutes.
right, we're back from our model break, and this is going to be our last session of the day. So, you know, you're just going to paint the rest of the painting. <laughs> you know, that whole thing. And you just coast for the next two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit back and, like, over your shoulder with coffee and just... Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 Cringe. Couldn't do it. like a backseat driver but for painting yeah. can you lower your chin slightly thank you how's that work for you yeah it's great perfect thank you There goes my knee. That was your knee? Yep. Ooh. It'll be fine. It'll pop back into place. And... <laughs> this brings me back to our conversation earlier. We'll never be able to sneak around. Never. Because our joints are always cracking. If I was There's a Rice movie. Krispie joke in there, but I'm not oh. going to go for it. <laughs> I would never survive in a horror movie. Bless. <laughs> yep. to cover the mic. <laughs> oh, you actually sneezed? I did. Holy cow. Good. Yeah, bless you. I didn't know. <laughs> Thank you. That's definitely not one of my sneezes. <laughs> no. Your sneeze actually scared me today. Did it? Uh, right? Yeah, you were like... You're in the dungeon, and I was transferring my drawing onto my panel, and you sneezed, and it did startle me a little bit. That's funny. Do you mind straightening your head slightly? Yep. And then turning gently towards me. Perfect. And then tilting a little bit back. Yep. A little bit more. Perfect. Thank you. Does that feel comfortable for you? Totally. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> yeah, it's totally comfortable for me. <laughs> Does the pose work for you, too? <laughs> it, it totally works. Yeah, those poses with your hands are hard. I remember I did that once in my hand. Both of them went numb. After a certain time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you working on this in this last session? Um, I'm softening stuff as well as just going through and just checking structure mm -hmm. things. Like if if I don't feel like I have the structure close, then I'll just soften it out for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then um, if I feel like it's relatively accurate, just making a, a quick assessment as far as that's concerned. And then... Um, I'm going to try to like go through the rest of um, the painting and kind of just apply a little bit of paint into certain sections, kind of get some edge, edges here and there and uh, color relationships going just so it's not jarring mm -hmm. tomorrow. I would say that even though my painting looks different from yours. I'm kind of doing the same thing now. Yeah, okay. Just making sure that um, I'm just going 
correcting some drawing things in the face, basically making sure everything feels connected and in place before tomorrow. And mm -hmm. like you said, if, it, if there's something I'm not quite sure about, I would want to make sure it's soft and ready to, for clarity tomorrow. Yeah. And even though I don't have my full value range that I'm working on, I have broken up my values a little bit, but basically thinking shadow, mid-tone, light highlight, essentially, just keeping it that simple. Um, not trying to break things up too much, but mm. if I add a mid-tone or a highlight, it's helpful for uh, edges and drawing. I just for the midtone, drawing for the highlight. <laughs> And just to reiterate so everyone knows, but this is the last of the three days for East October. So for tomorrow, we're also going to be working on this painting again with the same model, same for Friday. Um, so the point of this end phase of the challenge is to see how the artist would work in layers. So I'm excited to see how this comes together because we haven't done a video like this before because whenever we do painting from life it's all three hour a la prima mm -hmm. paintings very true and we all are direct or indirect painters so this is how we usually proceed with our practice so it's like very cool to see the difference between the two of them even though this isn't necessarily facing my fears for process it is certainly facing my fears for exposing this <laughs> uh, middle stage of the mm -hmm. painting for all to see when I don't have everything mm. worked out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good so. point. <laughs> yeah, the awkward stage is real. Oh, it's loud and clear. <laughs> and it will be for a while and just got to keep going. Yeah, but I think it's also important to see that no matter how good of a painter you are, it still has its awkward phases and it just happens. It's just how it is. You just have just to stick with it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a work in progress. So I try to remind myself to not um, judge it as if it were finished. Mm -hmm. It's You can judge it so you know where you want to be, but um, it's just part of, you know, you're in the middle. Yeah. And I always think about that quote from Jacob Collins, I think, where it's like, it should look pretty at every stage, which is true in some regard, but sometimes it's just not possible. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, I think he, you mean, it's, it's, you're absolutely right on the quote. I think his intent behind it is, um, is, to say to be thoughtful about like creating beautiful marks because mm -hmm. you don't know if you'll keep those to the end, you know. It, so it's just I think it's a certain philosophy of thinking on a certain way of painting, mm -hmm. um, but it absolutely doesn't mean that it has to be true. But it's kind of like when you're painting one of your paintings and you have all of this like beautiful brushy work that you're putting on the underpainting and you want to keep some of it later. It's, it's the beauty of what you did in the underpainting that, is, that helps, 
mm. uh, inform part of the poetry later that you get to keep. And, um, and so, uh, but that doesn't mean that every stage while you're working in the stage or even when it's done, that every part of it is, is perfectly beautiful, you know, but. Um, I like thinking of it as keeping your marks intentional. Mm. Yeah, that's, through the that's, process. that's a that's probably a better way of stating the same intent. Yeah. I like that, Erica. Erica dropping truth bombs. <laughs> Brush Drop out. the mic. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just have... summarizing what somebody else said. <laughs> <laughs> Can't sometimes, take credit for that. Sometimes summarizing's better <laughs> mm -hmm. because somebody thinks the same way you do, and it didn't make sense for them how it was stated. You know. We have nine minutes left. Nine minutes. Again, so happy we have multiple sessions on this. Mm-hmm. Honestly, though, these are looking great so far. I can't wait to see how they've progressed. Even though I won't be switching. And everyone, today is my last day behind the mic. No. So, I mean, I'll be back for, like, PFLs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. You'll hear her lovely voice again. This yes. won't be the last time. And maybe possibly see me painting again, because last Thursday when we painted Brian on opposite day, that was my last day of painting. So... It's coming to an end, but it was fun while it lasted. And we have a question from M. M. Borg asking, will your painting be wet, in parentheses, or dry enough by tomorrow for effective brushwork and coverage? That's a good question, because I, you know, now that you're saying that, I should have been paying more attention to that. It should be, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, um, most of the stuff, I think, will be pretty dry by tomorrow. Um, or dry enough to like work on top of. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, you know, I'll just paint over it anyway and just... Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's things you can do with, with wet-ish tacky paint. Like, I love to drag... Paint and we, we here we end up calling it draggy bits because I talk about it so much. But um, and you can create an interesting stutter in your painting if you uh, have it at a tacky stage. So like, you just got to know what your stage is and what opportunities you have available to yourself. Turn this way just a little bit. Alyssa is saying, this is all so valuable. The painting, the commentary, my neurons, and I'm sure everyone else is watching, are getting a serious workout. Thanks again, lovely people. Oh, you're awesome, Alyssa. Thank you for joining us this whole time. Mm -hmm. you, you, you and a few other people win the award for, for being our most loyal watchers during this whole process. For sure. I kind of like, I, I was thinking about putting in more down below and then I was like, you know what, actually I, it might be better to, to wait tomorrow to get all of that in. So I think I'm just gonna wait on that. How much time do you say we have left? Six minutes. Yeah, it's just not worth putting in because the drapery will change mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I think I'm gonna just like leave that be and have that a part of tomorrow's plan. Judith is also saying thank you. She says, I've been working on a portrait of my grandson and Sean Kelly studio says stunning starts. I look forward to seeing the rest of the process. Hey, well, thank you. Yeah, it's a I big finale to... here. Last three days, the last hurrah. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
we have such a wonderful model. I can't wait to mm -hmm. have her back again for another day. We're going to be great days. friends by the end of this. Yeah, we're all going <laughs> to be living it up. And we are also having our studio sale sometime in the month of November. So after East October is done, the paintings that has been made during the live streams will be available to purchase on our website and we'll be releasing more information as the time comes. But if you, if you saw a painting that you really liked, it will most likely be available to purchase for the studio sale and it's a great time to get presents for the upcoming holiday season. Yes, it's a wonderful way to, it's a unique gift to give to people. It's a wonderful way for you to support us here at the studio, mm -hmm. um, you know, for trying to put out this, this wonderful content. So, but it really has been such a pleasure. And I'm excited because I have, you know, part of this was also a way to test new equipment and material that I've gotten to like continue to do this. So I'm hoping this is the first of many unique, interesting live streams that we can do for our audience. Mm -hmm. We've gotten so many good ideas from the audience and just kind of brainstorming over the past few days of what kind of other challenges we can do. So it'll be good to actually have them done. Three minutes, three minutes left, everybody. And for anyone who wants to share what they worked on today, we have our Discord group. Yeah. You can share your work, not only from the daily challenges, but also just your other studio work in general. We have two different Discord channels for that. We also have a share your pet page. If you want to look at some cute pets and share your pet and photos. And Miss Rosie is on there. Oh, that, those pictures of her were so cute. Yes, her <laughs> alligator face and her forlorn face. Everybody needs to go check out her forlorn and alligator face. Yeah, it looks like she's waiting for her husband to return from war. <laughs> well, Christopher is saying thank you for a fantastic insight into a brilliant demonstration. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining. It's been our pleasure. From Ireland. I just think it's so cool that people from everywhere <laughs> come and watch. It's so cool. It will never get old. Like across the states, across the world. Mm. So it's awesome. New Zealand, Australia, Ireland. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Turkey, India, a lot of cool places. I just want to go visit them all. I know. Well, what would have happened to our world tour? It's right? happening. It's happening. I, you know, just think. That's our next session, Tina. We're going to be planning <laughs> our world tour. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's going to be very involved. Imagine how many post-it notes we're going to go through. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so many post-it notes. All right, well, we're down to the last 40 seconds, everyone, before we give our model a break until tomorrow. Well-deserved break. Mm -hmm. Well-deserved break, yep.
course, I do one of those things where I start working on the eyes right before we like <laughs> finish, and that's like the bad move. Don't do that. Well, <laughs> we did just hit five o'clock. All right, everybody. Well, look, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you so much to our model and for Tina and everybody else in the group. Y'all are wonderful. We will continue this painting tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you then. Happy painting for the rest of the evening. Don't forget to put your stuff on Discord. We'd love to see what you're working on. And y'all have a rest, a fabulous rest of your day. <laughs>